So, I want to talk to you today about the Dreamcast. You may have guessed Nibar Down, but the Dreamcast is my favourite console pretty much of all time. The Switch, Nintendo Switch is becoming like that basically. But for the Dreamcast, it came at a weird time in my life. I had just started the job, I had money to buy my own system. Um, my introductory to video games overall was from my dad uh, in like the very early 90s. Uh, he came home one day with an Atari 2600 and we played the absolute crap out of that thing. And then one day we saw ads on TV for the Master System console and it was much more powerful, much more exciting, a whole bunch of new games you could actually make out what the fuck was on the screen. And um, so my parents eventually upgraded to that for us. We, we played that to death, all of us kids, all, all my, my, I had five, sorry, six siblings in my family. Five, I don't know why, I didn't include myself, I guess. We played that to death. We absolutely played the crap out of that system. Uh, and then they sort of announced the Mega Drive, the Sega Mega Drive, which is the genesis of North America, because you gotta be different. We saw commercials on the TV, such as, this one. Somewhere on planet Earth, a scientist creates the ultimate machine. Last. A machine that will give him the power to journey into the mega world. With thousands of colors, 16 bit graphic technology, and 10 channel mega stereo sound. The most advanced video game system in the universe. Mega Drive from Sega. which made us so hyped for the system. We were so hyped for it. Like you had things like Sonic the Hedgehog, Aladdin, Lion King, Mortal Kombat were finally coming to home systems that didn't look like trash. And we were just over the moon and my parents eventually for Christmas upgraded us to that uh, system. And we had the six, six button controller and everything as well. It was, it was great. And then, sort of, I stayed with Sega uh, for all of uh, all of that. Um, and then they had the, the add-ons for the Mega Drive. Uh, they had the 32X system, which gave it sort of a mm, bit of 3D graphics, but it wasn't that great. Well, I think it wasn't that great. I never owned one um, because it was sort of one of those things that everybody shat on at the time. And there was other systems already announced, and I was like, well, I'm not going to go for that. But I got the Mega CD add-on, and that added on the music playback capabilities for CDs, which were kind of hot shit at the time. And then also games had full motion video in them because they were able to fit onto a disc instead of a small cartridge. And uh, they were okay. I feel like it was very underutilized. It could have been utilized way better than it was. There was only a few, like a handful of games that were great on it. And uh, after that, Sony had announced the PlayStation 1, Sega had announced the Saturn, uh, Nintendo had announced the Nintendo 64, and I had, my parents had announced that I wasn't getting any of them. <laughs> we weren't exactly well off, and any games that we kind of did play that were new, um, they were uh, rentals. So we went to like Blockbuster and we, we, we rented games, and uh, I, most of the new games that I played at the time were rented. If we bought one, it was very rare. It was either for a birthday or for Christmas, um, or it was on sale and it was like insanely cheap, so we bought one. That's why I ended up with a whole bunch of random ass games like Dynamite Hitty and shit like that, because no one wanted them and they were like, I don't know, 20 bucks or something. So my parents would come, I got you a new game, and I was like, woo! So I had to have a, I had a choice going through that period where I didn't have the PlayStation 1, I didn't have a Saturn, I didn't have an N64. My friends had them, and I got to play um, most of those systems uh, at their houses, with, and, and, and <laughs> sleepovers and, and stuff happened way more, uh, they were way more common for me to stay over someone's house because they had uh, Gex on the PlayStation, and I was like, ah, I've got to go play it, and Tomb Raider and all this stuff, and Tomb Raider, I have a Tomb Raider shelf behind me. I, I, I love that franchise, but Tomb Raider shelf's like there somewhere. I don't know, maybe one day I'll show it there. I, I, those things didn't happen till later. Because what happened was, I had missed out on that generation. I was well into my teens now, and Sega had announced the Dreamcast. And I was like, well, I'm a Sega guy, I want Sonic, I want Fantasy Star, I want all these things. So, 
I had a job. I had my first job at like a, um, I had McDonald's for like a while, but then I went to a, uh, a discount store. So you would call it like a dollar store. Kind of, nothing was a dollar, but you know, it, it was a dollar. So I worked there and during that time, the drink house came out and I had a choice now because I had to get either, I couldn't afford to get all of them. I could only afford to get one of them. I didn't earn that much. Uh, what I did earn went to my own food and I helped pay rent and also, uh, the stuff that I wanted. So Dreamcast was there, PlayStation was there, uh, GameCube was a was an option. I was a big Nintendo fan as well. Microsoft announced the Xbox, and I was like, "What the? F what do I do now? Like, do I get one of those? Do I? What do I do? You know?" Um, so I had to make a choice. The Dreamcast was coming out first, so that was my choice. <laughs> well, I was like, "Well, I need one now, and I want one now." Blah blah blah. blah. I didn't know that the PlayStation 2 played DVDs at the time. I didn't know the Xbox was capable of all that stuff. I didn't know the GameCube was going to have all this mad shit on it at the time. So I chose Dreamcast because I liked Sega and I liked their franchises. I fell in love with that system. It was only around for a couple of years. It got discontinued like 2002, but it was... Yeah, it came out in like 99, end of 99. And then in Australia, I think it was like November 99. It was like September to November period, before Christmas. And it had a bunch of games, and I know a bunch of games got delayed till the next year and all that, and I was like, well, it doesn't matter, I'll get them later, I can't afford them all right now anyway, I'll just get the ones that come out. So I bought the Dreamcast, and I got, I think I got Sonic Adventure, Soul Calibur, and Crazy Taxi Day 1, plus a controller and memory card, because I needed the memory card. And I absolutely fucking loved it! It was like the fa my favourite thing, the graphics were like sick, I had a monitor at the time, so I had the VGA adapter for it, and it looked fantastic on the monitor, and... I didn't have any games that weren't compatible with the monitor, and I, in fact, until only probably 10 years ago now, I didn't even know there were games that didn't work with the monitor. And they can they can actually be patched in anyway um, to work with the monitor. So the thing is with that, with the Dreamcast that I chose, I knew it was a bad choice, technically. I had friends who wouldn't shut up telling me that, who had bought PlayStation 2 and playing Jack and Daxter and... The new Tomb Raider was coming out on PlayStation 2 and it wasn't coming out on Sega, so I was like, what do I do? So, the re I'm gonna go over the reasons I love the, the, the Dreamcast because it felt, number one is it felt so new. It felt different. It had a lot of gaming experiences that weren't available elsewhere. So, it had a lot of peripherals. You had like the motion fishing peripheral, the maraca peripheral, you had like steering wheels you had for it, you had light guns for it, all sorts of stuff that just weren't available on anything else at the time, until much later anyway, like I know you had your guitars and all that later on, with PS2 and all that, but the Dreamcast it all felt brand new and the main thing was that I could play games online for like the first time ever. We would dial up internet of course, but that's all we kind of had at the time. I think we were still a couple of years off getting uh, ADSL, which wasn't even cable or fiber or whatever, it was just ADSL. It was like a better dial up, it was slightly faster. And at the time it was just me and my friends because I had moved out and I was, that's why I was helping pay rent and all that. But I was having a ball! I had Crazy Taxi, I had Sega, Sega GT, I had Jet Set Radio, I had Shenmue, I had Sonic Adventure, I had... The list goes on and on and on and on and on. And those games have stuck with me more than uh, anything from the other systems have stuck with me. Mainly because I owned that first and later on bought the other systems. But those games have stuck with me. And they seem to be the ones that are getting the HD ports and they're the ones that have the, uh, the online restored to them. And there's a big community behind the Dreamcast still. There's not really a big community behind the PS2 still outside emulation. There's only a handful of homebrew projects for the PS2. There are hundreds, maybe thousands for the for the Dreamcast. There are so many. People still release games yearly for the Dreamcast. There, is, there are games that come out from indie developers for the Dreamcast still that are getting released on Dreamcast and Switch. Like, they, they don't come out on PS2, they don't come out on anything else. They come out on Dreamcast, PC, and Switch. Like, it's a console that sticks with you. And I can't pinpoint why. I have spent years trying to figure out what the fuck is about the Dreamcast console that is just not about any other console. I've tried to figure it out. The games are great, hmm? yeah, the franchises were there, Sonic was there, everything was there, Sonic wasn't even on the Saturn, but outside of 
re-releases and like ports of other other games. So you had all your franchises, and then you also had the online play. You had all these new experiences. I think uh, I'm trying to see. I'm still trying to pinpoint why I like the Dreamcast so much, and I feel like it's because of the new experience. I feel like the Dreamcast had more new experiences per genre than any other console at the time. A lot of the other consoles were having like sequels, prequels, and like spin-off games of other, of other series. Whereas the Dreamcast had a bit of that, but it also had brand new experiences. So Sega was pumping out new things like Crazy Taxi was new at the time. You had stuff like Jet Set Radio was new at the time. Uh, something for the Amiga was a new thing. You had all that, but you, you did also have your your, your spin-offs and your, uh, your sequels and things. You had like your Daytonas and you had uh, Sonic, obviously, and Fantasy Star. But you had things like Out Trigger, which were like a game that no one ever fucking knows about. Out Trigger is an online shooter, and it was like a four-person co-op online shooter on the Dreamcast. It's never been on anything else except for arcade, obviously. But outside that, never. Yeah. But it was so many like that. Like you had a game called C Man, that C Man, don't stuff. You had a microphone. You talked to this fish. It was voiced by Le Leonard Nimoy. Well, the announcer guy was Leonard Nimoy. The fish was someone else. But the fish would talk back to you and it would tell you advice and you could give it advice and it would ask you how your day was and you had to adjust the tank water and the pressure and the, the, the heating of the tank and, and eventually he would die and get old and you'd have to start again and it was like this existential crisis in a video game but I've never experienced anything really like that outside of Tamagotchi since really. Animal Crossing has a bit of it but like you don't physically talk to your villagers, they talk to the other villagers and you talk to other people in the village. But it's not the same thing, and there's never really been the same thing since. Yes, I know C-Man got, uh, got, after the Dreamcast died in 2002, so it got ported to other systems, but it started at the Dreamcast, much like a lot of things. And that's my point. A lot of things for me, personally, that I like, either started with the Dreamcast or started with a Sega console. Tomb Raider. A lot of people don't realize this. Tomb Raider, they get associated with PlayStation. It really started on PC and Saturn. Uh, PlayStation was slightly afterwards. It wasn't exactly the same time. The game's the same. I own the Saturn version of Tomb Raider 1. Obviously, that's the only one that came out on Saturn because Saturn died and PlayStation got all the rest of them until 4, which were on the Dreamcast, 5 was on the Dreamcast, and then 6 was on PlayStation 2, and it's been on pretty much every console since then. But yeah, that's one of my favorite franchises, outside Sonic and outside Jet Set Radio or whatever. Jet Set Radio, it, it, it's one of my favorite franchises, but it's not my favorite game on the Dreamcast. So a lot of people go, well, what's your favorite game on the Dreamcast? And I'm like, well, it's, it's not Jet Set Radio, it's not Crazy Taxi, it's not Sonic Adventure, it's nothing like that. My favorite game on the Dreamcast, and it's a pretty obvious choice at this point, is Shenmue. Shenmue was a brand new experience. Again, another brand new experience that only was on the Dreamcast at first, reported to the Xbox later. That was because of a deal that Sega had with Xbox to release a bunch of unreleased Dreamcast games onto the Xbox because the Dreamcast was dying. Shenmue 1 and 2 were both on the Dreamcast. Shenmue 2 only had English text and Japanese voiceovers. The English voices were done for the Xbox, which I also had because I went on from the Dreamcast to the Xbox and I skipped the PS2 for a long, long time because of these Sega games that were going to Xbox. You had Crazy Taxi 3 and all that. So, but as far as Dreamcast goes and why it's my favorite system, I would say that it's the uh, the new experiences, the stuff that we all were, were new were coming with. So like, like Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, uh, Crazy Taxi and stuff, they were like the given games, but there was also a lot of like RPGs that were first on the Dreamcast. So it doesn't get associated with RPGs all that much, but it had a bunch. It had uh, the Evolution series, which then got ported to everything else later. You got Skies of Arcadia, which was a really long Sega-owned epic adventure RPG that only really got a release later on the uh, Nintendo GameCube as uh, Skies of Arcadia Legends which added a few things and made it a little bit easier too so you, know, you have to choose which one you really want to play there but yeah new experiences new, new first rpgs you had um rhythm based games you had racer yeah a lot of racing games yeah a lot of fighting games a lot of arcade conversions it, 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 it literally was the place to be and it's still a system that i go back to and play all the time whether that be through emulation or whether that be through the actual system itself with the gd gdmu 
I have in there and hook it up to HDMI and all that sort of stuff. I love the system. The Dreamcast is my favorite system. And the more I talk about it, the more I feel that way, and the more the marketing makes sense. It was some of the weirdest time for marketing for Sega too. I know this, I know this video is all over the place. I know it is. There's not much I can do about it. That's just how the Dreamcast was. The Dreamcast was all over the place. It didn't make sense at the time. It didn't make sense to even buy one. But I bought one and I loved it and I still love it. And that's the Dreamcast. My thoughts on the Dreamcast and I'll probably do thoughts on other consoles at another time. Sorry, this, this video is a mess, but hey, I wanted to do something about the Dreamcast. So I love it. <laughs> Bye!